Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Cellular reprogramming with the Yamanaka factors seems to be a very promising technology for helping in aging. This recent paper looks at the metabolic requirements of reprogramming and finds that vitamin B12, cobalamin, is a limiting factor in the process and in tissue repair as well. Not something that I had thought about before, but it makes sense that changes in metabolism induced by the Yamanaka factors would require different materials and not having them would slow down the process of reprogramming. Transient reprogramming by OPT4, SOX2, KLF4 and CMIC, otherwise known as the Yamanaka factors, is a therapeutic for tissue repair and rejuvenation. However, not much is known about the metabolic requirements during the reprogramming. They looked at this and saw that in mice that were being reprogrammed, the B12 was depleted and there were signs of methionine starvation. B12 supplementation increased the efficiency of the reprogramming, both in the mice and in cell cultures. Reprogramming is an epigenetic activity and they looked at the mechanisms by which B12 was working to improve the epigenetics. I will not cover this section in too much detail. They also looked at non-reprogramming case where tissue repair was necessary in ulcerative colitis, which B12 supplementation also helped. And the summary is that B12 improves the efficiency of reprogramming. First, a quick review of cellular reprogramming. You can use the chapters to skip this part if you're already familiar with this. Somatic cells, the normal cells in our body, like skin or liver cells, age over time and reflect the age of the person that they are in. The Yamanaka factors, OCT4, SOX2, KLF4 and CMIC, are genes which when expressed in a cell convert that cell back to an induced pluripotent stem cell or an IPCS. This is the kind of stem cell that can become any kind of cell and normally only exists in embryos. At this point, the cell no longer remembers its original identity as the skin, liver, or other type of cell that it was. During the process of becoming an IPCS, the cell takes on a younger epigenetic phenotype. The aim of partial reprogramming is to cause cells to reprogram to this younger form while not changing from their original identity. This would, for example, make your liver cells remain liver cells, but just be younger and have an enhanced capacity for tissue regeneration. In this study, the authors used a mechanism where in the absence of an antibiotic, doxycycline, the Yamanaka factors were disabled, but were enabled when doxycycline was fed to the mice. The authors ran a series of tests on mice aged between eight and 16 weeks, which is roughly between 13 and 16 years for a human. First, they test whether disrupting the microbiome impacted the effectiveness of the reprogramming by giving the mice a wide spectrum antibiotic before and while activating the Amanaka factors. In the graph on the left, we see the effect of the reprogramming on tissue. On the left are the wild type mice, which did not have the Amanaka factors. This bar represents the positive effects on the tissue structure by the Yamanaka factors with the intact microbiome. While this one shows the much smaller effect when the microbiome was largely removed with antibiotics. When investigating the impact on the microbiome of reprogramming, they found that genes used for B12 generation were upregulated. In this graph, we can see the level of upregulation the ones marked with the green asterisk are related to B12 generation, which led them to suspect that B12 was being depleted during reprogramming. Based on this, they tried supplementing with B12 in reprogrammed mice to see if it would increase the impact of the reprogramming, and they found that it did. Here, SCA1 and KRT14 are proteins expressed during reprogramming, which are both increased with B12 supplementation showing that reprogramming depletes B12 and can be rescued by B12 supplementation. So what functions is B12 used in? In mice and humans, B12 is a cofactor in two reactions, one of which is the synthesis of methionine in the methionine cycle, which then goes on to generate S-adenosyl methionine or SAM, which is the universal methyl donor 
which is used in many methylation reactions, such as those which are changing the epigenome. They also saw that serine, threonine, and glycine, which are also used in the same series of re reactions, as well as methionine, were significantly depleted. Not shown here, but betaine or trimethylglycine provides an alternative pathway for methionine synthesis, and this was also seen to be depleted in OSKM mice when compared to wild type. Folate or B9 is also required in this set of reactions, but supplementing the mice with folate and B12 had the same outcome as using B12 on its own. As mentioned, methionine was depleted, which we can also see here. But in a separate test, they showed giving the mice a large dose of B12 rescued this. They also ran tests on cell cultures to confirm the same findings without the complexity involved in a living organism and saw the same requirements for B12 and methionine in reprogramming. The authors looked in more detail at what epigenetic mechanisms were improved with the B12 supplementation. I'm not going to go into this in detail. However, one of the outcomes that they saw was that during reprogramming, more mistakes in the transcription of genes were made. This graph shows the percent of CTs or cryptic translations, which are incorrect translations of genes when compared to correct translations. Notice that this is a log scale. This bar shows the increased mistakes with OSKM compared to wild type cells, which are labeled as MEF or mouse embryonic fibroblasts. And this was rescued with B12 supplementation where the percent goes back to baseline with a very low p-value. The authors posited that the extra errors happen because there is insufficient methylation capacity during the reprogramming process as it involves more methylation than normal metabolism. One of the issues with using Yamanaka factors and reprogramming is the success rate of the process, which is not high. This would also be true for partial reprogramming in vivo. It makes sense that reprogramming introduces a set of requirements that are not present during normal metabolism. The extra methylation seems to put stress on the methionine cycle, which can be improved with extra B12. Not only does this increase the speed of the process, it also reduces the mistakes. Great to see more work going into understanding how reprogramming works in vivo. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for your attention and I wish you all well.